Um, hi guys, thanks for coming back to another video. Um, wanted to come back and just kind of touch base with you guys uh, regarding uh, some of the stuff that the Lord has just been showing me. Um, guys, it's just been it's been it's been phenomenal information. Uh, he's been leading me and guiding me along the way. Um, just to double back and talk a little bit about coming into this particular video. I mean, um, pointing me toward 223 time, which led me to Stonehenge, which led me to, um, you know, identifying the major lunar cycle and that things are starting to repeat. Um, notice that they called Stonehenge some type of Neolithic computer. Um, and when it comes back to start, um, as a repeat of a pattern or a repeat of a particular cycle of time within it a particular pattern that seems to repeat itself it almost seems like it's a reset of some sort um i can recall um actually having a conversation about rebooting a computer or somebody getting information in regards to that uh sometime back but um, when you look at Stonehenge, and, and especially in that college doc document, they called it a Neolithic computer, which um, which is pretty interesting uh, if you think about it. So moving forward from that, um, and and um, having the dream about the three circles in the square, um, three circles in the squares which uh, was just a dream that I was given and I was understanding uh, from this dream I, I just had an understanding um, I wasn't specifically told anything that I can recall but I had an understanding that one of these if not all of this was representing the father and so um, I really wasn't sure what that was all about what could it have been and then um, when I started doing the research I came across Thornboro which was the three now hedges um, connected together, uh, which looked very similar to a string of pearls, which, uh, which was very interesting because that all seemed to align up with the stars that were in the belt of Orion. So uh, the placement and the alignment of thorn, thorn burrow hedges um, and the pyramids all seem to align with how the the stars and the and that particular alignment is on Orion's belt. So there is some connection to it. There is some significance to it. We were also led to the word Sijiji, um, which is three things um, aligned in a row: sun, moon, and usually one other planet. Um, if we take a look at it as the earth, it could be the earth, moon, and the sun all together in alignment. And that would be identified as some type of syzygy. Now, um, to identify a lunar month, uh, according to the 223 lunations or the 223 of time, which we understood from Stonehenge. And if you don't understand what I'm talking about, please go back and listen to um, the two videos prior to this. Uh, that study will go in and explain to you what I'm talking about. Um, but the lunar month is identified from one syzygy to another syzygy. And, uh, and so that's how they were able to identify that particular lunar month of time. Um, when you look at three things aligned, and here we are looking at Orion's belt, um, we see three stars aligned, um, which is pretty interesting. One of them being identified as a string of pearls. Um, we had already been led to the pearls and the hem of the pearl and some of the other dreams that the Lord had given me or visions um, that I shared back in some of those other uh, videos. So I know that we were on the right track in regards to that. Um, but guys, there's, you know, there's so much more. Uh, the Lord has been bringing it back up into my memory about that particular dream about um, being out of sync in time. Time was different um, where the world was, where my daughter was in a particular dream. Um, to go back in, I saw her. I was not able to communicate with her. We were in different parts of time. We were still in the same place. Um, I could see her, um, but I could not communicate with her. 
and I asked the Lord how I could communicate with her, and he told me I could leave her a note of some sort. Now, he brought to mind when I was given that information, um, the dream, uh, not the dream, the, um, the movie about the lake house. Now, I've shared this uh, information with you. I did find a little snippet of the movie um, I would like to go ahead and share. Um, it's not the full movie. It's just a little small uh, snippet of the movie so that you guys can get an understanding as to what I'm talking about in regards to that movie. Hang on one moment. Okay, so here it is. It's only, uh, it's less than two minutes. I sometimes feel as if I'm invisible. I never felt that way when I lived at the lake house. It's the one place I felt most like my true self. I bought a house on the lake. It's beautiful. Dear new tenant, welcome to your new home. I'm sure you love living here as much as I did. What do you mean you lived here? Since no one has lived in this house for years. For argument's sake, what day is it there? April 14th, 2004. <laughs> no, it's April 14th, 2006. It's the same day, two years apart. Can this be happening? From Warner Brothers Pictures. This house is about connection. Comes a love. How's your sunset? Mine's beautiful. I only wish you were here to share it with me. Without limits. Even though this is clearly impossible, it's amazing. And a place that reaches across time. I miss the lake house and its trees. Thank you, Alex. Keanu Reeves. She was more real to me than anything I've ever known. Sandra Bullock. It's kind of a long-distance relationship. Pick a place. I'll be there. I promise. No. It's not meant to be. No, don't say that. Something must have happened. One man I can never meet. Jim, I would like to give my whole heart to. The Lake House. Well, there you go. End my video. <laughs> That's the movie that the Lord put on my heart and mind when I had the dream about my daughter being in a different time. Now, anytime I have a dream about my daughter, well, I, I, I better not say anytime. The majority of the time that I have a dream about my daughter, she is representing the world. Okay. Um, and so there's going to be a, there's going to be a distance between um, two different groupings of people. And the only thing that I can identify this with is it's going to be God's elect or God's chosen and the world. It's going to be God's people in the world. Um, there's going to be a disconnect. Um, notice that in the movie, they were in the same place. They were even talking on the same day. Um, but not in the same year so they were they were uh, they were outside of time uh with each other okay now does it mean that god's people are going to be outside of time completely um you know i don't know i have no idea but there's going to be some type of a of a disconnect um between um the world and god's people now he has been telling us about uh, these places of safety. He has been telling us about them. Um, I want to read to you a little part of a um, message that he gave me the other day, and I'm going to have to look for it, so I'm going to have to pause this video. And then this morning, he also said a little bit more in regards to those places of safety. So let me find that one uh, from the other day, because it's just a small little snippet I want to share, because he's talking about going back to the beginning so hang on one moment okay so i found what i was looking for so now um my issue was is if we're going to be outside of time or di in different sinks of time but in the same place a lot of things came to my mind okay a lot of things have been coming to my mind and as a matter of fact i was awake in the middle of the night for several hours the other night and einstein and i had a bed party um, I was in bed. My husband was asleep. I had my, I had my phone and I was scrolling and I was reading all kinds of, um, interesting 
theories and papers and documents and everything I could on Einstein and um, the the ability um, and his theories let me just put it that way um, you know the Lord led me to some of this several years ago when I first got this dream um, I was also led to a movie um, called Interstellar uh, and I spoke about it uh, several years ago um, but there's he's bringing this back and so it's very important that we understand what's getting ready to happen um, he wants to make sure that we all understand what is getting ready to happen there's going to be a disconnect uh, there is going to be uh, that trees in the water dream where there was something in the water that diverted the sheep and the goats um, this is going to be the separation of the people and so um, and when it's a separation it's it's going to be in effect where we won't even it will be very difficult for us to even be able to communicate with them um, so obviously we will be in some type of a of a place of safety um, we will be right here we're going to be in the same place just in a different time of this place um, so many things came to my mind um, but one one specific one that came to my mind was the fact that the Lord made known the mysteries of when we go back and we look into our journals that he keeps coming around the same time every year to give us a, a specific message about the same thing every year so what he was giving me in February of 2014 he gave to me in February of 2015 16 17 18 19 not the exact same words but the same study just a little bit more expanded a different aspect of it and what have you but we, we've been talking about this it, it it's only God could do this at so many years of going through how would we even be able to keep up with um, what he's trying to tell us and talk to us about but if you go back into your journals if you've been keeping them for a long amount of time and I've said this before you will be able to go back and see exactly what he was trying to tell you year after year after year after year it's the same stuff and so I thought it was really interesting that in that movie they were on the same day just in a different year so um, for those that are going to be reading my journals once I'm gone um, let me just say this go to the dates go to the specific dates um, of what is being recorded in my journal and take a look at it um, in consecutive years I've got I don't know four years of written uh, messages and dreams and, and different things from the Lord that he's been trying to give us information um, regarding so uh, your journals that you're going to be leaving here are going to be uh, very very important for those um, for those that are going to be searching for the Lord at that time so um, so that came to mind now another thing came to mind was a particular dream that I had um, where I felt like I was taking my computer and my and my kitty cats um, with me somewhere I had a dream that Michael came to pick me up uh, we were in some type of a uh, <laughs> craft uh, that could go through the air go through space uh, we were in the cosmos um, I had both my kitty cats in there with me and I had my um, I had my I had like my work bag that I would normally take if I'm if I'm going you know on uh, you know going to spend the weekend somewhere or if I need it for work or whatever um, you know but if I'm taking stuff on you know to go somewhere uh, for a weekend or whatever I normally pack my my laptop I pack my Bible I pack uh, several of my journals I've got all my pens and highlighters I've got little notepads and uh, in my dream I was talking with him because he was driving uh, I was behind him looking like over his shoulder at, you know at where he was trying to go and I happened to look down into my bag and I that's how I realized I was searching for something to aid him in whatever it was that he asked me about um, in my bag so I had my bag and I was like what I didn't see any suitcases <laughs> but I had my bag I had my work I had my I had what was important to me in that in that bag um, and I had my two kitty cats with me so um, 
you know, I feel like the transport is going to be, you know, we, we're, we're going to be going. And what is really interesting is, is that my, my animals were with me. Uh, they were with me. So um, I had one hiding like he normally would. And the other one was just, you know, doing fine. And so, uh, I mean, normal uh, characteristics of them. And so I thought that was really interesting. But that did come to mind, too. And I want to talk to you all about that because I had someone get a hold of me and I would like to um, I just kind of touch base a little bit about what they were explaining and what their um, experiences have been um, through dreams or visions as well. Um, but let me talk to you a little bit about uh, what I was delving into with Einstein. When I was looking into some of his theories and what have you, I'm going to tell you why I started going into that direction is because of that computer and the repeat, okay? Um, because of that Stonehenge, what they call the Neolithic computer, and the fact that 18.61 years started a repeat of a pattern. And that pattern continued to play out again for the next 18.61 years, but eight hours later is what we understood. And so, um, and so that's why I started looking to see, because I recall, uh, I recall the story in the Bible about the shadow on the steps moving back 10, 10 spaces, right? I recall that. So I know that, I know that, um, that time can be adjusted. I know that the sun remained high up in the sky and did not move while there was um, a battle going on. Uh, so I can recall that there was um, there was other different things that I was trying to identify. Where where would it say that there's a repeat of time or a repeat of something uh, in scripture? And and we know that patterns profit they they come and they play themselves out. Again, and so when we see types and shadows, we know that if it happened once, it can happen again. Um, there's nothing new under the sun. We understand that. Um, so that was some of the reasons why I was going through looking at all different kinds of things. Um, uh, but there was one thing that did pop up through the Einstein uh, uh, research that night that I would like to go ahead and show you. So let me go ahead and pull that up for you. So I ran across this about uh, something called the eternal return, uh, which I thought was pretty interesting, uh, especially in lieu of what the Lord had told us about 223 and time, um, and that, that it was a repeat. Um, it says here, eternal return, also known as eternal recurrence, is a theory that the universe and all existence and energy has been reoccurring and will continue to reoccur in a self-similar form an infinite number of times across an infinite time or space. The theory is found in Indian philosophy in ancient Egypt and was subsequently taken up by uh, Pythagore Pythagoreans and Stoics. With the decline of antiqu antiquity and the spread of Christianity, the theory fell into disuse in the Western world. Um, come down in here, and it also says in ancient Egypt, the scarab, or what they call the dung beetle, um, is also um, what used to be in place of the crab for cancer on the Maseroth. Um, it was viewed as a sign of eternal renewal and re-emergence of life, a reminder of the life to come. And then it says that the Mayans and the Aztecs also took a uh, cyclical view of time. Now, that's pretty interesting because now we, we talk, we've we been talking about these circles and about these things coming back around. Um, you know, things moving in, in circular. Time is not linear. It is not. It is a, it is a circle. It, it, it goes around and around and around. But here's the other thing. Time can also... Time can also bend, bend around things. Uh, time, you know, I was reading a, a lot of those articles on Einstein, and I'll provide you some of the links of, of what I was looking at because it was just fascinating. Uh, very, very in-depth. It's not for me to be able to have to be able to come and tell you all about it. Um, I can read it and, and, and attempt to grasp some of the things that are being said, but I'll provide you the links. Maybe you can grasp it a little bit quicker. It takes me time to get it. To get it in, um, 
but it was amazing about you know um, how mass can um, can alter time and the movement of time how quick it will be or how slow it could be and that if something goes out you know for far away and then comes back uh, time moves at a different pace on going out into the cosmos and coming back versus what it was here um, we've heard about all these different time travel movies um, you know where People left the ship or went out, you know, and 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 came back, and and a hundred years had already passed here on Earth, and it was only you know several months of that particular person's life, and so we know that there's a difference of how time moves and what the movement of time is, and so um, my my mind came to a lot of different things when when I was looking up all of that stuff, but the Lord reminded me of something that He had just said to me because I was asking Him, Lord. You know, are you are you saying we're going back in time? Um, are, are, what what does that mean? You know, that reset, that that you know that pattern coming back and 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 going again. What what does that mean? Uh, how how is that going to play out? Are, are we, you know, and what about that movie? What what's going on with that? How is that all going to play out? And when he gave me a message the other day. Um, he gave me just a small little part that was trying to answer some of the questions that I had. And he said, my dove, it is this, okay? You have come a far way. Now, he's been saying that right regularly lately. Um, I At first, I assumed that that meant my growth in him um, and my, my maturity in him. But I'm not real sure that's 100% of what he's trying to say. He is saying you have come a far way. Um, you have come about to the time that will be brought forward, okay, from the beginning, from the end, from the way, my way. Okay, let's say that again. You have come about to the time that will be brought forward from the beginning, from the end, from the way, my way. Okay, well, if everything, if everything is a circle, if this is the beginning mark, right, and everything is a circle, and I come and I start and I go into a circle, then my beginning is now the end or it's a new beginning right so my my ending can be my beginning my beginning in the very beginning is a beginning and when I go around that circle and I come here I am now at the end or I'm at a new beginning right Okay, so I'm bringing that to you because of what he said here. So let me say it again. You have come a far way. Okay. You have come about to the time that will be brought forward. Brought forward. Okay from the beginning from the end from from the way my way you shall see and know what I am saying to you is true you shall see and know that's what he said and he said it twice you shall see and know so I guess my questions where I was talking to him. I'm like, Lord, are you sending us back in time? Are we going outside of time? Is that where these places of safety are? What, you know, what what is all of this about? Um, you know, I know it's the division of people. I know that there's going to be some type of, uh, uh, of issues communicating um, uh, unless we're being sent to the ones that their hearts are getting ready to turn. Now we know that we have jobs to do. But, um, He's saying we can leave a note of some sort, which I thought was fascinating because of that movie. 
But now he's saying here in this one, um, it's being brought forward. The beginning is being brought forward. The beginning. So now, how far back is that? Are we talking Adam and Eve beginning? Is that what we're talking about? Um, you know, is, is it 2,000 years? Or is it 6,000 years? Um, you know, I, I, I wasn't sure. I have not received, I have not received an answer on that. Um, but I did read something in a book, um, just recently that I would like to go ahead and read just a snippet of it to you. Um, maybe this might help open, uh, you know, open some windows or doors so that we can understand this a little bit better. Hang on, let me open that book. Okay. Um, this particular book is called The Magnificent Numbers, and it's by Bonnie Gaunt. Um, and it is um, a particular, there's a chapter in here that I just ran across actually earlier today. And, um, and it's called The Marriage of the Circle and the Square. Now, The Marriage of the Circle and the Square. Now, um, you just can't make this stuff up, guys. I'm telling you. Now, recall in that other video where I said I, I woke that morning and had the word stones and an author in my mind. Um, I ordered that particular book, and it was Bonnie Gaunt's book, but it was a different book. And I happened to see this one as well. And I just said, oh, well, let me just go ahead and order that one as well. And so when I opened it up and saw that it said the marriage of the circle and the square, I, I mean, you, how did, I had no idea, first off, I was going to have that dream. And then second off, I, I was going to order a particular book because it was leading back to the Zara and the thread, the scarlet thread and all of that. And that was the book that I had in my mind that I wanted to go ahead and order um, because of what he was telling me with the 112 and something else that I just need to talk to you all about. But that's got to be a different video. Um, for, for him to guide me to be interested enough to at least order this other book, okay, before I was given any information on Stonehenge, before I was given this dream about the circles and the squares, before any of that, why would I, why would I have ordered this book? Um, I don't know what drew me to it. I, it had to have been him. It had to have been. Um, and then for me to open it up today and find this in here, I was shocked. Um, <laughs> he, he works in mysterious ways. You just have to follow along, you know. Um, you know, some people asked me, and, and there was a comment on, on one of the last comments of the last video, you know, well, how smart are you? No, I'm not. I'm not. Please know, know that to be true. It takes me a long time to get stuff in. You know, it takes me longer than anyone else. I have to go back over it a time and time and time again, and my mind doesn't work as quickly as some um, others that listen to my videos. And so I just, you know... It, it, it takes me a little bit longer. And so for me to see this and understand this, I, you know, there's, it's not, it is not me. I am the conduit. That's it. That's it. And, um, and, you know, sometimes I can, I can hear what's coming out of my mouth and, and some, there's some days, uh, the, the spirit is just speaking through me and I am just as amazed as you all are. I have to go back and, and edify myself sometimes, you know, because it's just, it's amazing. Um, how God will work through his people. Uh, it's, it's amazing. It's amazing. Okay. So let me, let me just read to you, um, just a couple of pages out of this. It's, it's, uh, it's, <laughs> this is the picture that's on the other side. Take a look at that. That is Stonehenge. Um, that is, that is what the Lord gave me, led me to on that two, two, three time. Uh, so let's just go ahead and uh, take a look at this. It says, male and female are fundamental opposites, yet the sacrament of marriage is a union of those opposites, producing one harmonious whole. It is a union orda ordained of God, 
I call it a sacrament because it is indeed a sign, an illustration of a greater union. The ultimate union is the oneness between man and his creator. The thread of the story is this ultimate oneness um, is woven through all of his dealings with his human creation. Uh, the tracing of the story reveals a most remarkable illustration, the marriage of the circle and the square. I shall use this figure, the circle and the square, to test and amplify the concepts thus, thus far presented. True science calls for certain logical procedures. During the process of data collecting, uh, inductive reasoning leads to the formation of one or more tentative hypotheses. Um, the study of origins of knowledge requires a scientific method of proper investigation of the sources of information during the data collecting period. This begins with observation, description, and the assembling of quantitative data. At this point, of pre, at this point preconceptions are always present concerning the phenomena being observed, the process of inductive reasoning. Next is isolation of the parts or evidences. This requires separation and analysis. And after collecting, isolating, and analyzing the available data, deductive reasoning can then enter the picture, and logical thought processes based upon the analysis of the data begins to formulate a positive hypothesis. These logical consequences must then be tested, and if the test results are positive, it is then reasonable to, to assume that the hypothesis is accurate. Thus far, we have been observing, uh, okay, she's talking about what she was doing in the book. She was observing collected data and indulging the senses in an exciting, mind-blowing process of inductive reasoning, formulating, and hypothesis. This, uh, these observance, these observations have all pointed to a logical conclusion and a beautiful, harmonious picture begins to emerge. The picture speaks of a creator who had a definite plan and carefully and systematically carried out that plan, regarding in recording in advance its components and its concepts, building the witness of that plan into, into his material creation. The plan involves the ultimate re reconciliation of his human family to himself in an everlasting union. We have observed many of the witnesses of that plan in the construction and geometry of the Great Pyramid, Stonehenge, the Temple, the Earth, Sun, and Moon. Conclusions have been suggested that the creator of the universe was indeed the architect of these edifices and that they should t and that they tell of a redeemer Jesus Christ through whom is promised a resurrection from the death condition and an opportunity for man to return to a condition of harmony with God let's look at some of the evidences which at first glance may seem unrelated yet upon closer examination fit into one harmon harmonious whole piecing together a beautiful picture the relationship of the circle and the square is the tie that binds the pieces together. The ancient Hebrew scriptures tell of the most revealing story regarding the first human pair, a man and a woman made in the image and, like and likeness of God, a human couple made in perfection. The story reveals the tra tragic results of their disobedience to their creator and their fall from that perfection. The penalty placed upon them for their disobedience was death, not immediate death, but a dying existence in which they were estranged from God. But they were given a promise of eventual reunion with their creator, a return to the oneness that they had originally enjoyed. The means by which this reunion could be made possible would be through a redeemer, one to pay the penalty for their disobedience and set them free from their condemnation. Such a redeemer would have to be a substitute to take their place in death, providing them an opportunity for life. As a surety for the promise of a redeemer, God killed the animal and used its skin to clothe them. So we know Genesis 3.21. Um, she goes in and she talks about the gematria. Um, she's saying it's no coincidence that the gematria for coats of skin um, is 288. And we have seen that number um, defines the perimeter of the Great Pyramid and Stonehenge. 
Um, and a square with the sides of 288 has a, per with all four sides of 288, has a perimeter of 1152, which is the number for the kingdom of God. Hidden in the transaction of providing them with coats of skins, God pointed all the way down through seven millennia to his completed kingdom in which Adam and the whole race would be united once again with their creator in openness, a marriage of that which has been, uh, which has been fundamental opposites, a marriage illustrated by the union of the circle and the square. So now my question to the Lord was, you know, how far back? Well, where is the beginning? Because that's what he said here, right? He said, um, you have come about to the time that will be brought forward from the beginning, from the end, from the way, my way. You shall see and know what I am saying to you is true. You shall see and know. That's what he said. Um, guys, uh, I I can only I can only provide it to you. I have I have a thought on my own. I I don't. Is it all the way back from Adam and Eve? Isn't that what we need to correct? Won't the curse be reversed? Um, I can only say it's a possibility. I can only say it's a possibility, but it sure does sound like it. And then when I was reading um, out of the book, it, it really sounded like it would be as well. So I, I leave that to your discernment. I ask that you seek the Lord on that. Uh, I don't have all the answers to it yet. I'm providing it to you. But guys, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, uh, I don't know about you guys, but I have been going through, I have been going through horrendous horrendous um things have been happening around me um it pushing me to the very limits of what i feel like i can handle um i know the scripture in the bible says you know you will not be given anything more than you know what you can handle but guys i'm t i'm here to tell you it has been extremely tough it has been tough because it's been I have had, I have had more, um, temptation come my way with old sins, with old stuff, stuff that has been dead and buried for a long time. Like, for example, um, smoking. Um, I, I don't even, I don't even have the urge to smoke anymore. It's been that long. But it's, the temp, the thoughts are being put in my mind. This is the battlefield, right? And so the thoughts are being put into my mind. And it's like, you know, trying to tempt me again, physically, with physical things. A lot, a lot has been coming my way. And it's more than that. It's fleshly things. It's fleshly things that are happening with those that I love. Um, you know, I'm, I'm looking at my grandchildren and I, and I'm seeing some things that are happening and going on, uh, you know, with them. And I'm seeing some, some, you know, some other things with other family members and friends. And I know that, um, you know, it's, it's, it's like waves of, of just, you know, uh, I'm, I'm tired. I'm done. I, I don't want to take any more of it. I'm just, you know, get me out of here kind of feeling. And just, it's just been like from, you know, and here you are trying to stay in the center focused upon the Lord. But I, I can honestly say in, in all of my walk with the Lord, I have never walked through something that has put me through such extremes and such intensity. Um, and that I feel like I'm be, being pushed to the limit. That's what I feel like. I said those very words um, to um, to my friend Petra the other day. I, I just I'm like, you have to pray for me because I am just being pushed to the limit. And I know some of it is because of what I'm providing. I know that's what some of it is. Some of it is, too, that that, you know, I'm my crown is trying to be stolen from me. Um, you know, I, I, I know we're at the end. I know we're at the end. So let me just say to you, if you are going through anything, 
um, to the degree that I am going through, or maybe worse. God bless you if it's worse. Um, please let me just encourage you, okay? Let me tell you what the Lord told me. I went to him, um, and I said, I said, Lord, you know, um, I know you know what's in my heart. Okay. I know you do. Um, but I am, I am, I feel like I'm at my wits end. Um, trouble sleeping, not resting at night. Um, you know, just, I mean, like up every 30 minutes, not resting at night and, um, and then having to work the next day or function and be extremely exhausted. And, and then all of a sudden have a wave of nausea or something come over. You know, I mean, I just feel like I have been pushed to the limit. And, uh, and I know that God is in complete control. And so I know that this is being allowed, um, for me, for my, for my benefit. And I will walk through it, but I'm telling you guys, um, <laughs> I said something to Petra today and she was just like, well, maybe this is just the dark before the dawn. Maybe, you know, because we're right here at the end and, and it could possibly be. Uh, but if you are going through the biggest extreme tests and uh, to the point where you are just like, I am pressed to my limit right now, um, then, then let me just encourage you. Um, others are walking through it too. Um, we're going through it too. And let me just encourage you and say, you can do this. Uh, continue just to, if you have to look down at your feet to where you actually see yourself taking a one step and stopping and then another step and stopping and, and, and seeing your foot actually taking that step is the encouragement that you need. Then focus on it because I'm going to tell you, don't allow the enemy to steal your crown. You've come too far. You've walked, you've walked too far. You've come too far to fall now. Don't do it. Don't do it. Um, you know, there, there's, there's been times and I've been walking through these last couple of days where I'm just like crying for like 30 minutes just so that I can get the stress out of my body because it's just, it's, it's overwhelming. Um, and it's coming at me from every direction right now. And it's not just physically against me, but it's where my heart lies. You know, it's with those where my heart lies. And so, um, you know, I'm constantly having to put things down. But the Lord said, do not allow anything to distract you at this time. That's what he told me. He said, do not allow anything to distract you. Mm -mm, no, sorry, that's the wrong word. Deter you. That's the word. He said, do not allow anything to deter you at this time. So stay straight. Let nothing deter you at this time. Okay? Don't. Don't let anything deter you. So I've been going to the Lord and I've been talking to him. Um, and I'm getting all of this information. So I know what I'm getting ready to put out is probably stirring some stuff up in the, in the, in the spiritual realm. Uh, I'm sure that there's, there's those that don't want to hear it. They don't want me to say it, but you know, He's told me I'm his his mouthpiece. I have to say it. Um, and so um, I want to read to you today um, what he said to me. And I recorded it in the car. And um, I've got this um, I've got this app that tries to print it out for me as well, but it doesn't pick up all of my words. And so I'm going to have to read to you in pieces because um, I have not um, transposed it yet. Um, <clears throat> You are well on your way to becoming all that I have purposed you to be. You will soon see all the things that I have said to you and shown you in ways more than, in ways more, uh, in more ways than one. Um, it shall come to pass. Let me go on down. Many do not know the ways that are coming, uh, coming, but, um, but my love, you can sh coming to be, but my love, you can show them the way you can tell them these things that I am showing you and telling you to become ready for what will be. Is what he's saying. There are times uh, upon the world there. There are times upon the world that many will wish they were gone from here. 
uh, whisked away to places of safety, that you have brought forth unto them many times, still <clears throat> they listen, oh, still they listen not, they hear you not, they receive you not. I say this to them this day, those that have entered into the possibilities of what I have given unto you shall explore the final destination of them all. Those that enter into the possibilities, okay, of what I have given you shall explore the final destination of them all. Now, we've been talking about places of safety. We, we've been talking about it for many years. We were talking about it. I've provided all of those messages to you. And a lot of people are like, you know, well, God doesn't talk anymore. God doesn't give dreams anymore. God doesn't speak anymore. God doesn't give visions anymore. If it's not in the Bible, it doesn't make sense. If it's not in the Bible, it's not true. You know, um, well, the Lord just told us that a lot of this stuff is interwoven in there. Um, so the places of safety, he's been talking about it. So um, how gracious and kind is he where he even says that if you even uh, it, it, those that have entered into the even into the possibilities of just allowing their mind to think on the possibilities is what he's saying. Guys, he's so gracious and kind. He is. Um let me read, let me start where I was. Uh, I say this to them uh, this day, those that have entered into the possibilities of what I have given unto you shall explore the final destination of them all. It is for them to enter in at this time. It is for them to ensure they know who I am. And it is for them to make known who you are at this time. Now, um, guys, He's getting ready to tell people who we are. He's he's getting ready to announce his court. He's getting ready to uh, call people forth. They're getting ready to come forth. You're getting ready to know. We know that some of the saints of old are here. Um, you're getting ready to see a lot of different things. Um, we're being given information in regards to what our our next job is. You know, uh, past the harvest and doing what we're going to be doing there what our next job is going to be. Um, you know, so so there is, you know, he's still speaking in it and trying to make sure that we're ready for all of that. Um, so many will know your name, um, he's saying here, and many will see you quite differently in the coming days. And that's what he's telling me. And, um, and he's, you know, and they will understand the words given unto them by me through you is what he's saying. Now he's told me, um, I was going to be a mouthpiece. Um, and so, you know, that's, that's something I have shared already. I'm not going into detail telling you, um, uh, what my job is going to be, um, <laughs> because, uh, I, I know a little bit about it, but I don't know a hundred percent about it. And until I can get a clearer picture, I probably won't share it. And even then I may not share it. Um, you know, you guys will see what it is at that time, I suppose. Uh, but it's pretty interesting to see uh, everything that he's been pointing and leading us to. So, guys, um, understand where we are in the timing of things. Uh, we are at the end. We are at the end. Uh, we are at. We are at the end, or we are at the beginning. Uh, you know, which which is it? Uh, it's both, really. It's like uh, we're at the death and the birth. You know, what was that 3 a.m. video that I did? And it was, um, you know, if you were coming to for, you know, to which which pray pray over people before they die, get there before three. But if you were coming for the birthday, <laughs> get there at three because you know it's the same thing. Uh, it's a renewal of life. It's it's what we read about that scarab, that dung beetle, you know. Um, it is. And so, uh, so guys, I bring all of this stuff to you. Um, you know, it's, 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 there's tons of stuff more. Uh, I'm finally being released to go ahead and share some of this other stuff. So, 
I will try to get another video out to you here very quickly. Um, well, I hope within the next day or two, if we're still here. Hey, we may not be. Um, but uh, but I'll try and get, get something out to you um, as quickly as I can um, in accordance with what I've got going on. So, guys, God bless you. Um, I come to you and I send you love from, from love itself. Uh, I ask that you stay full of peace. And, um, and fight off everything that's trying to come against you. I mean, if it's coming against you like it's been coming against me, I understand it's hard, it's tough. Um, you know, there's days I didn't think I was going to make it, really, honestly, guys. Um, you know, but somehow, through the grace of God, you know, I was able to do it. And um, so something major is getting ready to happen. It has to be. Uh, we're all looking around this 14th, 15th, 12th, you know, these next several days. I mean, we're, we, you know, it's, we're, we're looking at them. And, uh, you know, they're a high watch date. And um, what could it be? Is it transformation? Is it something else? Is it what, you know, what could it be? We, we just, you don't know what it's going to be. Um, but something significant is going to happen, I truly believe. So stay within him. Stay abiding in him as much as you can. If something is pulling you out and, and fighting with you against, lay it down at his feet. Um, whatever you have to do to get rid of it. I mean, for me, sometimes it's just tears and just crying out to God and saying, you know, help me release this so that I can continue to walk forth. Uh, I don't want to disappoint him, but even more than that, I want to finish my race. You know, um, it's been a hard, long road, um, you know, and I've, I've walked this path for him and I'm ready I'm ready to move on to the next phase. So until I see you all again, God bless you. Stay under his wing. Um, I pray it'll be face to face very, very soon. I hope it will be. God bless you all. I love you.